Okay, in this video we want to look at a really important subgroup of the symmetric group known as the alternating group. So let's just recall that the symmetric group Sn is the group of all bijections from 1 to n to 1 to n, and then uh, sigma in Sn is said to be even or respectively odd if it can be written as an even or odd number of transpositions. Let's recall that a transposition is just a two cycle. And so in a previous video we proved that every permutation can be written as a product of transpositions. And now next we want to define this thing called the alternating group. And so we call it AN and that's all permutations in SN where that permutation is even. Okay, so now the first thing that I want to prove is that AN is in fact a subgroup of SN. So um, here it's just a subset. Now we proved this evenness or oddness was well defined in a previous video. So it's okay to uh, build this subset out of evenness or oddness, but now what we want is for it to be a subgroup. Okay, good. So, and we're gonna do this by the subgroup test. And so let's recall that H is a subgroup of G if and only if for all X and Y in H, we know X, Y inverse is also an element from H. So this will be the easiest way to prove that this is a subgroup. So let's suppose that we have two elements from this alternating group. I'm going to call it the alternating group even though we haven't proved that it's a subgroup yet. So let's say we have mu and sigma are in a n. So what that means is that they can be expressed as a product of an even number of transpositions. So let's say mu is equal to tau 1 up to tau 2k. So that's an even number. And let's say sigma can be written as tau prime 1 all the way up to tau 1 2m. Great. And now the next thing to notice is that sigma inverse equals tau 2m prime all the way down to tau 1 prime. And so that's pretty easy to check. Let's recall that the inverse of a transposition is equal to itself. And so by the shoes and socks theorem, when we take an inverse of a product, we have to reverse the order and take its inverse. But since the inverse of a transposition is just itself, finding the inverse of sigma, we really just have to reverse the order of those transpositions. Great, but now let's notice that mu sigma inverse is equal to tau one up to tau 2k and then tau m down to tau 1 and those are all primed. But now notice that this is exactly equal to 2 times the quantity k plus m transpositions. Great. But that's obviously an even number which makes it an element of a n. Okay, good, and that finishes this proof. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then uh, we'll prove that there are a certain number of elements in A n and look at some other examples. Okay, so uh, we want to prove that uh, the number of elements in A n is n factorial over 2. And we're going to do that by making a certain bijection. So let's first recall that A n is all even permutations. Good, and then, so that means Sn minus An is equal to all odd permutations. So remember, any permutation is either even or odd. So if we've taken all the even ones out of Sn, all we're left with is the odd permutations. Also, we'll notice that Sn equals the disjoint union of a n with s n minus a n. So that's like pretty obvious. And then next thing we can show is that these two have the same number of elements. And we'll do that by considering 
the following set theoretic map between these permutations given by maybe phi goes from a n to the set s n minus a n and it takes an element from a n and it sends it to one two times another element from a n. So here we have to assume that n is bigger than or equal to 2 in order to have this transposition within Sn. And so now notice if sigma is an an, then it can be written as an even number of transpositions, but that means 1, 2 times sigma is an odd number of transpositions, which makes it not an an. Okay, good. Now we want to show that this is indeed a bijection. So the first thing we need to show is that it is injective. Great. And we can do that um, in the following way. Let's say sigma of, uh, sorry, phi of sigma 1 equals phi of sigma 2. But what that tells us is that 1, 2, sigma 1 equals 1, 2, sigma 2. But now we can just multiply both sides by the transposition 1, 2, and that's going to give us sigma 1 equals sigma 2. So in other words, it is injective. Okay, I'll clean up this little bit, and then we'll show that it's surjective. Okay, so the next thing we want to show is that this map is actually surjective. So let's take mu from Sn minus An, and notice that means mu can be written as a product of an odd number of transpositions. So maybe that's tau1 up to tau 2k plus 1. So that's most definitely an odd number of transpositions. And we can rewrite that as a product of another set of odd transpositions in the following way. I'm going to multiply the beginning of it by the product of 1, 2, 1, 2. Notice that's just the identity. And now we're going to have tau1 up to tau 2k plus 1. So notice that's still an odd number of transpositions. We've just um, included the identity at the beginning. And now the next thing that we want to notice, if we um, allow phi to act on 1, 2, tau 1 up to tau 2k plus 1. So notice that is an even number of transpositions. We have 2k plus 1 here, and then we have another one right here. So there are 2k plus 2 transpositions. Good, but... What does phi do? It left multiplies by 1, 2. So that's just going to cancel this 1, 2 out and leave us with tau 1 up to tau 2k um, plus 1, which is exactly the element we had started with mu, which shows us that this is in fact um, a surjection as well. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we're about ready to finish it off. Okay, so far we have the following. We've decomposed Sn as even permutations, disjoint union, odd permutations. So that's a disjoint union, which we discussed why before. And we've also shown that the number of even and odd permutations is the same. Now we can take this uh, set equation and uh, turn it into the following. So in factorial, we know that's the number of elements in Sn, but that's going to be equal to the number of elements in An plus the number of elements in Sn minus An. Great, but these two are the same, so that gives us twice the number of elements in An, but now we can easily solve this equation and get that the number of elements in An is in factorial over 2, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we're going to do an example. Okay, so for our example, we'll show that A10, so the alternating group on 10 letters, has an element of order 15. And so this is actually going to be super easy. We just write down that element and argue that it has order 15. So um, the idea here is to notice that a 3 cycle is even because it has an odd number of entries. A 5 cycle is also even because it has an odd number of entries. So that means we can multiply a 3 cycle and a 5 cycle, and that is also going to be an even permutation. And since 10 is large enough, we can make them disjoint. So let's pick the 3 cycle, 1, 2, 3, and the 5 cycle, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now notice that's in A10. We could also argue that this could be an element of A8 as well.
But now notice these two guys commute with each other and this one has order three. So order three, this has order five. And then since they commute with each other, we know the order of sigma is the LCM of three and five, which is obviously equal to 15. So we have achieved an element of order 15 in A10. All right, this is a good place to end this video.